Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another crypto video. And I wanted to start this video out with some memes, but I realized quite quickly that this is just my life, I guess. I, <laughs> uh, I spend way too much money on crypto, you guys probably know it, and at some points it really feels like this. <laughs> So, this is like watching the dip without any money. It's just being buried all the way, just looking at those dips, not being able to do it. Yeah, that's sometimes how it feels, but eventually it'll all get better because at least we've got ourselves some crypto. That's what I keep telling myself. Guys, let me know in the comment section down below. Have you actually bought any crypto over the last month or so? Or are you just staying quiet, waiting for a bigger dip, or waiting for the price to come back up? Let me know in the comment section down below. And make sure you press that like button if you are appreciating these daily crypto updates. All right, XRP Shark coming in saying, I want to repeat this again. My conservative target for XRP at the end of this bull run is $25 to $27. If the lawsuit is resolved and utility comes in, then a target of $96 to $240 would be possible based on past performance and the according Fibonacci levels. All right, so you guys probably know by now that I'm always quite realistic with what I think a crypto can and cannot do. If we ever talk about a crazy price, understand that it's not my prediction, but something that we find and that we discuss or cover. And in this specific scenario here again, will I tell you that these things are impossible? No, a firm no, because I've explained a couple of times why you can't really put a price tag on the ultimate price level for a crypto. It's just impossible to really do. And from that same perspective, I would tell you guys with, you know, wholeheartedly here that whatever he says, it's possible, but... What is most realistic for within a cycle? I, can, I think that's what most people are wondering about. And I would say that if XRP hits, for example, $10 within this initial cycle, for example, poof, lawsuit is won. If XRP goes to $10 within like the next week or so, I would be extremely satisfied. Why? Well, if you think about it, putting money into the stock market, putting money in any, any freaking where, is not going to get you the results that one of these choices can make because that's still from this point of forward would be about let's say times 16 17 something along those lines if you think that that's little nothing you're crazy and you're you're deluded i think because times 16 in your money is an extremely profitable thing it's extremely beautiful that you can get that done within for example such a little amount of time even if you've been in here for five six years even if right and you just bought crypto, uh, I mean, XRP for uh, three, four years ago at the all time high. And so, oh, you still want to make more. At least you tripled your money, any person at that point. So it might not have been the biggest gains, but at least it's so much money, in my opinion, still. And it's, it's going to be crazy. I would go extremely crazy if that already happened. And then from that point of four, you can start to think, okay, so what? where can we go to what's going to happen next? I don't know. I don't know what the next catalyst is going to be. Is it going to be utility? Is it going to be this, that, that? I don't really know. But I'm always telling people, I think $10, $20 is within a really easy grasp. BitBoy and a couple of other people I know said, okay, $30, $34, $37, you know, like that ballpark. But I keep telling people, no. You know what? If it were to be a bear market, so for example, if ripple were to fix it all right now i always estimated that it could go to about two three dollars but mind you very much so that i set this when the xrp price was closer to 10 20 cents right now the price has already tripled from when we were speaking all those things into existence and so going to three dollars at that point was going times 15 right maybe times 17 as well so I just kind of keep repeating that cycle from the price where we are at right now because that also determines in what type of market we are. So I would just say time 16 or so is not, you know, not really too far away from reality. As a start, I keep explaining to people, I think there's way more to be uncovered in due time, but I don't want you guys to have the highest expectation. If you think, oh, this bull run within three weeks, it might be $30, you might be let down. Better to under expect, if you know what I mean, and then let it over deliver basically. But if you start to put out these high targets in your mind, you can visualize them, but then don't put an end date on them. Otherwise, you're going to make yourself crazy. I'm just looking out for you guys. And on the same kind of page, though, uh, if I... I don't know if I should actually tell you guys this. I sometimes debate if it's a smart idea or not. If we actually get a settlement going, I already have a couple of orders placed on Bybit, as you guys have most likely seen. 
I will be going on a really heavy buying spree, buying a lot of XRP with some heavy leverage. And I told you guys before, I think it's going to be a, a, a very multi-million dollar day, uh, which basically means I think we'll be making a couple million dollars today that Ripple slash XRP settles in court. Because I think the price will skyrocket. Again, my own expectation, not fact. It's just what I think. And I will try to anticipate on that by trading with a lot of leverage. Is it risky? Oh, definitely yes. Oh, very much yes. Can I? Is it something I recommend you guys to do? Oh, hell no. Uh, but I'm going to do it anyway. Of course, yes, because I like the risk. I like the thrill. I like the money, the game, everything. And on a side note, there's a Bybit competition right now. It's kind of unrelated to my story, but I still recommend you guys to go check it out. Uh, 30,000 XRP to be won. If you put 300 XRP into your account, which is just an exchange account, really simple, make sure you change it from your spot wallet to your derivatives wallet though. It's a common mistake. If you Otherwise, if you press register now, it says you have no funds. Don't think you've been scammed or anything like that. No, it's just you have multiple wallets on this exchange and you have to kind of transfer it over. But I use this exchange every single day. And as I've just told you guys, it's most likely going to be making me a couple million dollars that specific day on its own. At least I hope so. And the reason I've been using Bybit over Binance is because Binance sometimes gets stuck when the activity is too high. And if you get stuck while trying to leverage trade, oh, you want to you want to kind of, you know, if you have your eyeball, you want to kind of pop that out because that hurts to watch. All right. BlackBerry XRP posted. For those arguing, XRP is the only, oh, it's only for the great reset and bad actors. You have to understand the bridge aspect. XRP is a bridge for other currencies. Good actors can come in and back their own currencies by hard assets and end the money printer and XRP will be the bridge for them too. Now, I think the only thing I wanted to kind of fetch from there is that with XRP, you can put up so many different theories, but the ultimate part that's so important, I would say, is just being the bridge. Can it really encompass a lot more? Yeah. Is it really that relevant though? Yeah. Yeah, it is kind of because, I mean, the more you can get, the more the money is going to flow, the more money is going to be in XRP, the higher the price is going to be. Then again, the main purpose is the bridge and whatever reset you're thinking about, it's all great, but it's all next to what XRP is kind of designed for in, in the essence. You might say, oh, but it's designed to digital reserve currency and all of that. That's again what Brad House did say, at least as my sources, which are Brad House himself, have uh, noticed. Then again, I will always say, you know, bridge is the thing. It's going to be utility enough. It's going to be doing so amazing. And Ripple explained before, first vertical and then expansion. I know the mission is solid and I just keep believing in it, man. But a lot of people hate on it. A lot of people hate on this process. Uh, then Hester Pierce, if you have any ideas about how regulators can better communicate with retail investors, here's an opportunity to share them. Pretty funny that the, I guess, regulators don't understand how to communicate with people. You would kind of think after so many years, they would figure it out, right? But um, no. And you would kind of think that the SEC, after so many years as well, would figure out how they can protect investors and how it can hurt them. But uh, no, which is uh, rather interesting. Then, guys, once more, make sure you press that like button if you want to help these videos out. Bitcoin could see Q4 rebound as inventors hunt for yield. I don't know why I still had this one open, to be honest with you. I mean, obviously, people look for yield, and obviously, any quarter, we can have a rebound. Putting Q4 here is just a miscellaneous guess, as it could be Q3, like right now, it could be today, tomorrow. Who knows exactly when the bulls are going to be returning really quickly, because it's a manipulated game. Now, on the same type of uh, <laughs> note... Traders bet Bitcoin price won't explode anytime soon and they're expecting a boring summer. Yeah, I mean, the expectation can be there because in the summer, people are not really busy with trading. They have summer vacations, some of those. A lot of people are just kind of spending their money instead of putting it into speculative markets and they are a lot more risk averse during these months. Then again, exactly the opposite is true as well because people spend a lot more money in the summer months. I would say, man, you don't really know when things are going to be exploding. So don't don't put your hopes on, oh, no, okay, after the summer is over, it's going to go. You never really know. You really don't. And that's actually following history here. I try to kind of look for myself a little bit, trying to, you know, put some, put it into perspective for myself. And going through all these numbers of Bitcoin monthly gains here throughout these years, there's no real pattern which you can pick. You might say, okay, you know what? If we actually look all the way back a couple of times, the summer months were doing worse than other months. Then again, that's also definitely debatable because it's not always in the exact same fashion and it's really difficult to pinpoint because literally it's a 50-50 type of ordeal. And if you see it on some of these years here, for example, you might say, oh, okay, so July, August, September, October, it did bad. Then again, December and January and March, April, May, it also did bad. And then a little bit afterwards in the summer months, it did good. You can't really draw any conclusions out of this, at least is my opinion. 
it's really, really difficult uh, to pinpoint exactly what's going on. But one thing I guess we can say is that this is just, again, a cycle of a cycle of a cycle. At one point or another, Bitcoin is going to have to recover, though, because if you look at it, you know, one, two, three, four, five months of decline. One, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three. It's never really that. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six is the maximum, I guess, of months of decline we've ever had. Right now, we've been at three and a half already, um, or I guess let's say th call it three. I mean, are we going to break this cycle or, or what? I guess the worst cycle was here in 2018 of just, you know, continuous negativity. I guess you can actually call this as kind of a nine months of downwards because, I mean, if we started at 7.5 and ended off at 3.4, it was a, you know, a negative little streak. But then again, we kind of did recover at one point or another. And that's the thing, guys. If we have a proper DCA strategy, ultimately, we will still win. At least that's my own perspective. All right, then Bitcoin will accumulation as exchange deposit signal bearish momentum lies, kind of. I've actually been telling you guys about this over on my 5-Minute Crypto channel, and even on this channel, I believe, that it's it's a huge deposit. It's a huge withdrawal phenomenon where it's really difficult to say whether or not wheels are actually making a difference and whether or not this actually has any relevance to the price in the real world whatsoever. All right, let me quickly take one thing out of the way. BlackRock Petroleum is actually a different company than the BlackRock Asset Investment Firm. Please understand that. Uh, they're set to operate 1 million Bitcoin miners in Canada, though, which is pretty damn bullish. I saw a lot of people say, oh, weren't they really bearish on Bitcoin just three days ago? Different part, all right? BlackRock Petroleum is not BlackRock, the investment firm. So, um, yeah, just wanted to quickly let you guys know about that one. If it's a subsidi subsidiary, that could actually be so. I didn't actually check for that one. But at least it's not the same company on its own. So, um, yeah, there's also a different CEO. I, I, don't, I don't think so. Um, yeah, here, it even says it here, BKRP, which should not be mistaken for BlackRock Investment Management, will take ownership of the yada, yada, yada. Who cares about the rest? It's about gas, it's about mining, but I'm not really that type of guy to talk too much about the entire energy debacle and about the entire mining migration, mostly because I think the entire mining migration is pretty stupid from a certain perspective, and the energy stuff is not something I can make any difference in whatsoever. So even up to you guys, what can I tell you? That, that miners are not that energy efficient, but they're working on it. What, what can I really update you guys with? I don't know. So I'm not really speaking out on that too much. Tim Draper stands by his 250,000 Bitcoin price prediction, says it is modern inflation hedge thanks to constant USD printing. This is actually coming along with the stock to flow model. So I guess I can also kind of stand behind that. Bazinga.com. Thorchain suffers a $5 million loss in latest DeFi exploit. Thorchain, a lot of people in the comment section are really excited about the project, but apparently they had a little bit of a negative breach happen just now. Wanted to quickly share that as well. If you're wondering what's happening with Thorchain, there you go. Historically low spot volumes and investor indecision weigh on the Bitcoin price. That kind of goes together with some of the other articles I saw, like for example, this one. Negative sentiment on crypto Twitter peaks again. History shows this could be bullish. It's all not really true, to be honest with you, man. If people are saying this could be bullish, this could be bearish, it's all just a miscellaneous guess based upon something that happened in the past, but that doesn't necessarily have to repeat itself. Conclusion being, it may or may not happen yet. We don't really know. And high volumes on the socials, low volume on the socials, you can pick a different story every single time. High volumes, low volumes, it of course also correlates with the amount of people and the amount of enthusiasm in the space. I mean, if prices are rising like crazy, more and more retail, more and more you know, people miscellaneously get into it. And the, the less exciting the price is, the less volatile it is, the less there's going to be trades. Of course, there's a, few, few, um, I don't know, fusiosa circle. Let me look up the English word for it. Fusiosa circle. English? What the freak is the name in English? Fusion circle. Okay, I didn't even know that existed in English as well. It's a fusion circle where it's just going to keep going in the same type of loop and loop and loop until one point, you know, it breaks because of some news or some sort of new party. Theoretically speaking, every time volumes go down, it, it, there's a very good chance the volatility dies down a little bit, which makes the volume most likely go down a little bit more, which makes the parties less interested, making the, everything go down and just kind of, it keeps going down in a little bit of a loop of negativity, a little bit of a spiral. Then again, another thing I saw right here regarding mining was Malaysia Police Department steamrolls 1,069 Bitcoin mining machines for stealing electricity. Really sad ordeal, really scary ordeal. Really, really scary because this is basically just so much money. $1.25 million that just broke down. 
because those guys were stealing electricity. It's it's really crazy if you start to think about it. I think the police department could have definitely thought of some better decisions if they really wanted to. Uh, point being, I guess, don't steal electricity unless you have a really good plan. And, well, this is how to destroy money, right? Because this is basically like, I don't even know what it's like. Destroy. It's, it's like destroying money. Yeah. In... Yeah, I don't know. Deflation. <laughs> um, I don't know what to call this, man. It's just sad to see that, again, it's uh, it's away. I can't really comment on it too much, I guess. All right, that was it for today's news, though. We had a lot of stuff to cover. Make sure you check out the Bybit competition. Link is down below. There's already 100 people who have entered. We have to get to 500 for the 30,000 XRP. Uh, right now, we are at 6,000 XRP, though. That's going to be given away to people. It's already a good amount, but we can go five times higher. So make sure you sign up. Link is down below. And I'll see you guys again in another crypto video pretty soon.